Hey guys, this is Post-Production Pi, and it's time for episode three of our weekly Lightroom edit. Now, uh, I'm not sure if I had this set up last week. I don't think I did, but uh, this week I actually busted out my old studio recording mic. It's like a $400 mic just sitting around gathering dust, and I thought, why not use that to record tutorials instead of this janky little Logitech that I've been currently using. So hopefully you guys will be able to hear all the nice, rich, deep bass in my voice. I'm just playing around. No, but seriously, it'd be cool if I was like a radio broadcaster or something. Anyway, uh, let's get to it. I wanted to show you guys, we're going to use one more shot from the same set of images that we've been using for the last two tutorials. And I think after this one, we'll move to another set of images. But this was an image that was shot out at Laguna Beach. Um, it was shot raw on a Canon 5D at 1 200th of a second, F9, ISO 1600. Now I'm going to hit I to remove my information, hit F twice to go full screen, and then we're going to get into developing this image. I'm going to shrink the top bar too. Okay, so this image is fine, but what I, you know, when I'm typically in a rush and, and kind of moving from scene to scene very quickly, one thing I typically won't bother to do is switch up my white balance in camera. I know exactly what I want my shot to look like, but I don't really have the time to constantly be switching it. And this is mainly on like an engagement session. If I go to a wedding or if I go to a, a venue, every time I step into that venue, I do actually dial in my correct white balance because then from that point on, basically you have the exact same shot and it's gonna look the same, like your, your exposure and your white balance will be consistent throughout that entire time that you're say in a particular room like a ballroom or something but on an engagement session or on portrait sessions it doesn't make as much sense because oftentimes you're going quickly from location to location so when I shot this shot I kind of had a, a, in mind for it to be a nice mood shot and so that's what we're gonna do we're gonna turn this into kind of a mood shot so let's do that first thing I want to do is uh, I want to correct my crop actually it, it's really bugging me in this shot um, I do try and keep my crop straight but uh, in camera but sometimes it is a little bit off so I'm gonna hit R and then we're gonna adjust this crop just so that the horizon is straight you always want to adjust your crop so the strongest line in your composition is corrected so in this case it would be our horizon line now let's start with our basic adjustments and uh, we're gonna work our way through starting with the most major ones first now like I said I, I like this shot as it is and I want it to be a mood shot um, I think the brightness is fine. I want it to be kind of a dark, moody silhouette, but I want it to have that really strong sunset kind of feel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag my temperature up, and we're just going to take it up really high, actually, till it's kind of just a nice orange, really sunset glow. And I think about 6200 is about right. From here, I don't really need to touch recovery too much because I'm not worried about you know highlights on skin tones and stuff like that in this image. This image is really meant to be just a cool mood shot. Um, I don't really want to use much fill light. The thing with fill light in a shot like this is it's going to increase noise in my shadows. Like you look, if I, t I turn up to 20 right now, it boosts the shadow detail, but it really just kind of enhances that noise all over the shadows. And I want it to be a moody shot anyway, so I really don't need any fill light at all. What I do want to do is raise my blacks up a little bit more. Now, one thing that I, I kind of dislike with a lot of silhouettes that are being done right now is that... Uh, silhouettes are cool when you kind of black out the entire couple like you take it up really high but they're also really nice when you leave a little bit of that facial detail a little bit of the detail in the image um, I kind of tend to lean towards that side versus just the whole crushing the black type silhouette like this so what I want to do is just kind of pump it up to around maybe seven and then I'm gonna get the rest of my uh, kind of contrast boost out of the actual contrast so I'll raise my contrast a little bit, take it up to about maybe plus 60. I, I love seeing that kind of line detail in the face, just kind of seeing a little bit of that shape there. It's also nice to see a little bit of the shirt detail and stuff. If you guys don't like it, you can crush it, but whatever. It's up to you guys. Notice also that when I, when I do shoot silhouettes, I try and frame their faces over white areas in my scene. If I were to frame their, their face over like the, the rocks and stuff like that, the rock detail or whatever it is that is behind them that's also dark is going to add shapes to their face and most likely it's going to be unflattering. If the entire thing behind them is dark, then, well, you and I are going to see a silhouette. So I always try and move around and into a camera angle where I can get their faces completely in front of the highlight object. All right, from here we're going to go on to clarity. I'm going to boost my clarity a little bit. Again, we always want to be careful not to take it up too high because we, we get that uh, fringing issue. So let's go up to about 25. I will boost my vibrance a bit. 
And uh, I'm going to actually do this. What I want to do is actually take down saturation and then boost my vibrance. And what this is going to do is just kind of flatten out some of those super bright tones. And then the vibrance is going to kind of boost up a little bit of the kind of non-skin tone colors, which it wouldn't really matter in this image. What I'm trying to do basically is pull out some of the color and then enhance some. So it kind of creates this nice desaturated but still warm toned image. So I like that right there. Let's go down and do a little bit more. So I'm going to shrink down my basic box and now let's go to our split toning panel. Now I think it'd be really cool if this image had a little bit of blues in the shadows. So what I'm going to do is just take my hue up to the blues and actually the easier way to do it is just to click on the swatch right here and then you can actually adjust and see the adjustments as it's being made. So I don't want to kill it too much, but I do want to add just a little bit of blues into my shadows. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go to highlights and I want to really kind of bring out that nice warm color in the sky. So I'm going to add just a little bit more of this uh, orange ish color to our highlights. All right, right. There's about great. You can play with your balance. If you like, I, I kind of like the balance a little bit more on the warm side. So I'm just going to take it up a little bit to that warm side right there. All right, now that looks great where it's at. Let's go to our detail and sharpening. Let's uh, get the correct amount of sharpening for this image. Where it's at is okay. I do like to be a little bit on the sharp side, so I'm gonna take it up. My standard setting is pretty much 70, 1.5, and 30. And it looks really nice right there. I can see nice hair detail, nice eyelash detail, and it's not too high. If we go up too high, again, we start having a lot of noise, and we start having really strong edges, which we don't need. All right, and be mindful too, like what size you're gonna print to. Uh, we don't have too much noise we wanna reduce. I kinda like that film look, that film grain look, and this has a really nice quality to the uh, noise right now. So I don't wanna reduce that. If it had kind of a gross quality to it, like if it was, I had a lot of um, color noise, or if the noise wasn't very uniform, I might use some noise reduction, but it looks great where it's at. Let's shrink that up. Let's go to my last thing, which is always my lens corrections and vignetting. I always do my vignetting from the lens corrections panel. Very rarely do I actually go to the effects panel and use post crop vignetting, mainly because it's too strong. Um, I don't really need it strong. I just want, if I ever want a vignette, I want it to be subtly darkened on the edge. And if I ever want a reverse vignette, I just want it to be slightly lighter on the edge. So I, I don't want to do anything that's like very, very noticeable. So what I'm gonna do for this image is basically just, uh, well, let's see, I think it look would look a little bit better if it was just slightly darker on the edges and we're gonna pull in that midpoint so it's really not noticeable as a vignette. So I'm pulling in the midpoint all the way to zero, that way it just gets a subtle darkening effect from the edge down to the center, just kind of pulling the focus in. So we're gonna take our lens vignetting to about 30, I think is about right, and that's really nice. It kind of brings the attention to the center. We don't notice the vignette, it just looks like the colors are darkening on the edges. And that looks great, guys. There's nothing else that I want to do to this. Let's check out our before and our after by hitting the backslash key. So here is our before. And now here is our after with our mood editing. All done right in Lightroom. Hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. And we'll see you guys with the next episode. Take it easy.